All right, the creepy gag is over now. If you were expecting a jump scare, I'm not gonna do that. I'm also not having that art change this entire video. Do you know how much work it would take me to make a Halloween version of Nagito with all of his poses? I am not dealing with that. Plus, I'm doing the editing two days before uploading this video, so no time either. And no, the eye being purple doesn't have anything to do with my lore videos that I haven't done anything with in a while. Unless... Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, a classic Disney movie about Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, trying something new to celebrate Halloween, by stealing Christmas and making it its own. Plagiarism, basically. At the very least, he learns to be the best at what he does in the end. It's a very fun movie to watch with amazing stop motion production, and I highly recommend watching it if you haven't already. Also, there's debate on whether this movie is considered a Christmas movie or a Halloween movie. I believe you can interpret it however you want to, but I'm doing this for a Halloween special so it's a Halloween movie. This massively praised film ended up getting some video game representation about 10 years later in Kingdom Hearts 1, and then didn't get its own game until two years after that, so uh... It was a pretty long time for anyone that wanted a game based off of it. But regardless, I'll be looking at Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, Ogie's Revenge to celebrate the oh-so-spooky holiday that is Halloween. Especially since I can't celebrate Halloween any other way right now. We start off a year after the events of the movie, with the residents of Halloween Town celebrating Jack's success on another horrid Halloween. But Jack feels like he's being inadequate and wants to bring something new to make Halloween even better, or would it be worse in their words. Whichever the case, Jack wants it for the next Halloween. He explains the situation to Dr. Finkelstein, who gives him his latest experiment, the Soul Robber, which everyone calls Flubber for those that remember that. I wish I was the first one to make that joke, but a bunch of other people already did, and I'm kinda sad about it. Anyways, the soul robber inspires Jack to leave Halloween Town and make some discoveries that he can put towards next year's Halloween. While Jack's away, Lock, Shock, and Barrow bring back Oogie Boogie. Oogie then terrorizes Halloween Town by taking control of the various traps and no-gooders that the citizens are making for next year's Halloween. When Jack returns around December 23rd, the citizens are all in hiding and it is now up to Jack to take down Oogie Boogie. While the story at first is relatively basic, it gets a lot better as it progresses. Because you'd probably go in with the standard expectation of Sally getting kidnapped and having to save her, as well as various citizens in Halloween Town, and the game does that. But the stakes end up being pretty dang high later on, and the game plays around with a few ideas. For example, Dr. Finkelstein's brain is replaced with an evil one, and we later stop Oogie from terrorizing Christmas Town and trying to kill Santa for all the stuff that happened in the movie. But it's revealed that Oogie has taken over the towns and or kidnapped the rulers of all seven holidays, those being Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter, Independence Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and Halloween. Halloween's a little bit weird because Jack was just gone and Oogie kind of just took over Halloween Town, but you know. And he does this to try and become the Seven Holiday King and celebrate Oogie Boogie Day seven days out of the year, which I don't know how one would celebrate that, but whatever, all of it's really cool. Unfortunately, we don't see what the other towns or their leaders look like, and I would really like for that to be explored, but the actual mention and use of these other holidays is something that is incredibly refreshing implemented very well to raise the stakes and divert off of expectations. Especially since in the movie, the other holidays kind of just... existed, and that was about it. So props for having a really good original story and expanding on the universe around it. Like honestly, this game probably has the best original story that I've seen so far for the games I've reviewed. And that's saying a lot considering I've done almost 50 license based games reviews so far. To start off, every chapter begins with this green representing the current area while Oogie laughs evilly over dark organ music. How haunting. Now, allow me to gush over the rest of this game's presentation because my goodness this is up there with some of the best. 
The graphics overall just look fantastic. I mean, for starters, just look at these environments with all of this super cool looking architecture around Halloween Town, the scarce tree in the backgrounds of the graveyard making the area more haunted looking, the sewer system has this glowing green water, and the skyboxes just look fantastic, and look at Christmas Town and how festive it is even though it's being invaded currently. And just look at the hinterlands where they're cursed or whatever it is. <sighs> It's all so good. And there's so much color too, but it's not too much color to throw off the creepy nature of everything, which makes everywhere so pleasant even when I'm in one of Oogie's traps. It feels nice. Saying that out loud sounds really weird now that I say that. This along with the character models and animations, which are just moi, are very well detailed and festive for the Halloween season. Now, the lighting looks weird in some scenes because of how I have my emulator settings, and I do actually have the game for anyone concerned about that. I just played it on emulator for a clear picture. The irony is very much ingrained into my head. One thing I will also bring up is the camera, because you don't have control over it and it moves to select areas or follows Jack on its own. It thankfully doesn't have bad angles most of the time, but overall it wasn't too bad to actually deal with it, unlike a certain other game. To go along with the great animations, almost everything is fully voiced. There's like two or three voice lines that aren't spoken, which is especially weird given that everything else is spoken, unless they're supposed to be Jack's inner thoughts, as I think that's the only time that happens. But regardless, the voice actors are surprisingly not all the same. I say surprisingly because for the most part you honestly won't notice that they aren't voiced by their original actors. It's actually really impressive. Now. Everything else is already extremely good for most game circumstances, but the music. Listen, there is a good amount of songs in this game, and each one is superb. A lot of the soundtrack is from the movie. For example, This is Halloween and Take Our Town Back are the standard battle themes for the game. This is one of the best soundtracks off rip just because of that alone. However, that does kind of make this review harder because copyright might kill me, but it's still really good. Not only that, but there are even some renditions of character themes. Now, you may be asking, how are the character themes being used? Don't they have lyrics? The answer is yes, they do have lyrics. And they still do, because, get this, for this hack and slash game, the boss fights, while yes, are primarily hack and slash, they are also musical numbers between Jack and certain characters. I'm not kidding. This is with multiple songs from the movie and even a completely original song, and all of them are amazing. This, to my knowledge, is the only Disney game that has implemented the musical aspect of a Disney film into a game that is not a music slash rhythm game primarily, and I actually love it. I kinda want more Disney games that have their musical element be put into other genres of games like this. In a good way. But seriously, go listen to the soundtrack for this game right after this video. I can guarantee you, you will enjoy it. Oh yeah, and the death screen is a reference to that scene where Jack quote unquote dies. So, nice use of that. You play this game in 24 different chapters and within them, you fight monsters and maneuver around various areas of Halloween Town. Throughout Jack's journey, he obtains some powers that he can switch between for battle. His regular self is able to use the Soul Robber to whip enemies. He's also able to grab them and either slam them into the ground or throw them at other enemies. Jack can charge the Soul Robber, which for a short time increases its damage and gives it the ability to swing an enemy around you, pulling in and hitting surrounding ones. The Soul Robber outside of combat allows Jack to swing over gaps, pull objects, and launch himself upwards to higher platforms. The Pumpkin King power has Jack spit out fire or unleash a large explosion around him. However, this power is limited by the amount of red souls you have, so you need to find some if you run out of these to use its power. Other than that, this form is able to burn webs and wood to open up areas. The final form is Santa Jack, but since that sounds kinda lame compared to Pumpkin King, I'll give it a little nickname that the game cleverly thought of, Saint Trick. 
The Saint Trick form has the ability to throw presents, which can distract enemies and can be detonated. You can get three different boxes, or four depending on the difficulty, and when they're detonated, it can stun an enemy, freeze them, lower an enemy's status, or make you temporarily invincible, depending on the box. However, regardless of the box, it will make enemies come out of a possessed object. Jack is able to taunt enemies in any form. If a taunt is successful, you will be instantly charged. But in case you need extra power, you can collect blue souls. These give Jack a damage bonus whenever they're used. And if you have the maximum amount, they'll just use it automatically. When defeating enemies and breaking certain objects, you obtain various colored souls. These souls are the currency that is used whenever you die to restart a chapter, and also at the witch's shop for items and upgrades to your health and powers. Each boss has you do basically everything else I explained, but there is one more element. When dealing damage and hitting targets, soul notes will appear. Collecting these build up the dance gauge, and when it is full, you enter dance mode. During dance mode, buttons will fly in from the left and you'll need to press the appropriate ones at the right time to get a strong attack. Missing too many will result in the dance ending sooner. At the end of each chapter, you are ranked on average of how long it took to beat the chapter, the highest combo you got, the amount of times you took damage, and how many exclamation marks you got, which is due to successful taunting, hitting dance notes, and other circumstances. Depending on the rank you get, you get a soul bonus for your currency. The combat in this game is quite fun for the most part. Each form has their own use throughout the game and switching between them is pretty much crucial. Plus the spinning attack is really satisfying to hit against multiple enemies. I mean, look at this. It's still going. It is still going. This move feels really good to use. Now some of you are probably looking at this and it looks familiar to you. Jeez, this is the second time I've done that. But anyways, the reason why this is possibly similar looking is because it's a lot like Devil May Cry, aside from the dancing and musical numbers of course. And I know last time I said something like that it was weird, but with this game, it was made by Capcom. The people that made Devil May Cry. I'm allowed to say that this time. I will say it was very nice hearing the end of This Is Halloween with Capcom's logo appearing during the credits. The combat fun doesn't just end there though. The boss fights being musical numbers is implemented so well. I already said the music was spectacular for them, but these fights are honestly the reason to play the game because they are just so much fun. The dance mode segments are difficult sometimes due to the range for getting the notes right getting smaller the further in through the game you are, and they're rewarding by giving you a really strong attack for doing well in them. And I don't mean to brag, except I completely do. I'm pretty good at rhythm games, and I struggled a little bit doing this too. This being difficult is so satisfying to me. Need I also point out that these dance move segments are actually timed with the music? Depending on when you fill the gauge, you might wait a little bit so it doesn't interrupt in the middle of a measure. I want more games to have this musical aspect in them, or at least discover more games that do this. There's also a ton of replayability. For one, this quiz is actually kinda cool because it tests you on your knowledge of the movie and the game, which most license based games don't do. Then there's some secret side quest chapters that can be found in the game from certain characters and hidden areas throughout the game for more challenges, fighting, and upgrades. Plus doing good in chapters can earn you a figurine due to the ranking system and there's an overall ranking at the end of the game which unlocks cosmetic costumes depending on the ranking. I've actually considered keeping this game due to how much replayability there is and I don't consider doing that often. If souls are spawned out of reach, there's nothing you can do about it. And yeah, you do have this jump, but it doesn't really go anywhere, and the souls disappear very quickly too, so you might not have time to be able to do it. And yeah, it might just be small amounts at times, but they do add up. And there are other ways of getting currency aside from just breaking stuff or fighting enemies, but the main reason that it irks me is because this currency is pretty important, as it's used for the upgrades which are pretty dang expensive to begin with and are extremely beneficial for the game. Plus you lose 20% of your souls anytime you die, so you'd want to get as much money as you can. Easily missing out on very valuable money and power ups because of where you killed an enemy is pretty annoying whenever it happens since that money could be put towards making my experience easier. And this game isn't exactly easy, let me tell you. 
And no, the fact that the game is hard is not a fault. It's a fair amount of difficulty most of the time. I just always hate it when game currency is like this. <laughs> Comboing between forms has some potential that's just not there. You can combo between forms a little bit, but all of them are designed to have more individual rules, which isn't inherently a bad thing. It's just this doesn't scratch the itch for more combos or moves to learn. Soul Robber has a bit, and you're able to detonate the Saint Trick boxes outside of that form, but that's about it. Like, if I freeze an enemy with an ice box, then use fire, it should do a lot of damage, and it'll be a little balanced since doing this requires the use of Red Souls. Using the launcher with Soul Robber, then having them land on a box could pop them up again. Also, the launcher being at the final upgrade for the game is kinda whack. And to my knowledge, taunting as the other forms don't really do anything for the forms aside from Soul Robber. Correct me on that if I'm wrong, please. So maybe on a successful taunt as Pumpkin King, you'd get back half a soul worth of red souls, or your next fire breath would become a projectile, or you would ignite an enemy the next time you burn them. Like seriously, I don't know how an enemy burning is not an effect in this game. For Saint Trick, on a successful taunt, your next box, when detonated, would release a Christmas tree that spins around, sucking enemies in, and multi-hits them, or the effects of the boxes last longer for a short period of time. The potential is there, I just wish it was in the game. Also, the whip hitbox could be bigger, because Lock Shock and especially Barrel are really hard to hit. This was an extremely fun way to spend my Halloween, or the build up to it I guess. Just about everything with this game is amazing. The story, the music, the gameplay, all of it is outstanding. There are a few aspects that could be better, and it does have a few aspects that could be better, and the potential is 100% there, but it's still very solid for what it is. It's packed with content and is an exciting Halloween game to play, so if you are able to, Try this game out at some point because I think a lot of you would actually enjoy it. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me the Frozen Cavern and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. I will say this was a very nice Halloween special for me to have, especially since I didn't really have a Halloween special, at least not one that was on time anyways. And funnily enough, I had actually wanted to do this game last year, but by the time I actually had looked at the game, I realized it was too long, so I had to switch over to another game, and then I also had classes, so that added up with it. So I ended up doing Monster House instead, after Halloween, but who cares. But this year, I'll actually have it out on time for Halloween, so that's very nice on my part. But anyways, let me know how many of you guys played this game. I have a slight feeling that not too many people have played this game, considering again the whole 10 plus year gap between the movie and an actual game for Nightmare Before Christmas being made. In fact, I didn't even know this game existed until the gamers joint made a video on it. But tonight, anyone in the US should be staying inside. We have no reason to be going outside right now, because a certain thing is still going on because people didn't want to listen. So if you didn't listen before, you better listen this time, because I'd rather not want to do this next year. But regardless, if you guys have not already, make sure you look in the description below because that is where all of my social medias are located. My Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord are all in the description, and they are always for you guys to be notified of whenever I have another video or an update for the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as share this video out with your friends and family. But until the next video, take care.